The bedrock of our democracy is the idea that voters can choose their own representatives. One person, one vote. But what if politicians change the system so severely that it's the representatives who effectively choose their own voters? Where the politicians use sophisticated technology to gerrymander voting districts so obscenely that one party rarely worries about losing? Where the districts stretch and bend and look like cartoons? This is not good for democracy. Heading into the 2018 elections, our country's voting districts are skewed so heavily that the nonpartisan organization Fair Vote estimates Democrats could win up to 54% of the total U.S. House vote, yet still not win a majority of seats. And Fair Vote says of the 435 House seats up for re-election, only about 10% will be competitive. The 2018 and 2020 elections are the most important of IBEW members' lives. If we show up and win races for legislators and gubernatorial candidates who support working people, we can elect leaders who will create more fair and competitive districts. Here's why. Each decade, states redraw district lines for House and Senate seats, as well as for the United States House of Representatives. That means the next two elections decide who's in office for that crucial event. So why is all of this important? Because in the vast majority of states, the people deciding how district lines are drawn are not independent. They're actually elected officials at the state level. So if one party controls all three branches of a state, that party can create districts solely to benefit themselves. And when one party decides, they can make sure the opposition party wastes thousands of votes. The two key concepts of this are called packing and cracking. Cracking is where the majority party dilutes the votes of the opposition across many districts and blocks thin enough to make sure the majority party wins those seats. Packing is the idea of grouping all of the opposing parties' voting power into one district, thus reducing their voting power in other districts. Both strategies make the winner obvious in most races long before the election, and you can see how they've been utilized over the last decade. Back in 2010, all three chambers of Wisconsin's government switched right before the 2011 redistricting. And when Republicans won, they changed the state forever. The GOP redrew district lines that allowed them to win more seats with fewer votes. In the 2012 election, Republicans won only 48% of the total state house vote and 45% of the total Senate vote. Yet they claimed clear majorities in both the House and Senate. Republican Governor Scott Walker used this power to cripple labor, busting public unions, and enacting right-to-work legislation across Wisconsin. In Michigan, the state also redrew lines under Republican control. In 2012, Democratic candidates won over 200,000 more votes in U.S. House races, but ended the night with only five of the state's 14 congressional seats. Five months later, Michigan became another right-to-work state. Finally, North Carolina and Pennsylvania Republicans also redrew U.S. congressional lines in their favor and saw the same result as Wisconsin. In 2012, despite Democratic U.S. House candidates winning more votes in each state, the party barely won any seats. Between the two states, Republicans claimed 22 elections and the Democrats claimed just nine, and barely any of the races were close. To be clear, this is not a Republican or a Democratic issue. It's a fair voting issue, but we can only get fair districts if we go to the polls. So keep this in mind come November in 2018 and 2020. Competition is good for the IBEW, for working families, and for our entire country.